Howdy, and welcome to the round table. For Red Dirt D&D, I'm Michael Cross. Johnny Payne. Brooke Bullock. Kiri Hester. Aiden Cross. Ash King. Connor Schnold. And wow, what a great episode. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh. <laughs> She really, she really did say we're going on a little a adventure. Little adventure. I gave you such That's a good pretty. hint. Yeah, <laughs> episodes nine through twelve were so much fun. Uh, do want to talk about that in a moment? But first, I do want to actually talk about something that happened to me over Christmas. And my brother-in-law was trying to find a gift for my wife, who also plays Dungeons and Dragons. Well, he doesn't play, although he does listen to our show because he likes the fact that it's like classic radio yeah. show. He has no idea about the mechanics. Shout out Hi, to the brother-in-law. Brother <laughs> that's Johnny. I know, so it's not. Well, that's why it happens with John. Z. That's John, John, John Johnson. Is It is John. Uh, it's John, not John. John. Hi, John. Hi, John. Hi, John. <laughs> anyway, so he went to go look at a place in Bartlesville called Paper Games, which okay. is a Dungeons & Dragons mm -hmm. gaming shop. Woo! Shout out guy, to Paper Games. Paper Games, thank you so much. The guy said, uh, John says, I have no idea what to get for <laughs> her. Because I don't know anything about this game. Because she goes, does, does she collect dice? And oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he basically asked, is she a true gamer? That's basically what he asked. Of course he said yes. So he got her one of the, the bags that I've got nice. myself, which is all divided. One of those big... Yeah, yeah. The, like, the Laura yeah. Bailey style. It's like style. a bag of holding. Yeah, yeah. It's, really a, it's really a handy haversack because yeah. you can see the different <laughs> exactly. compartments and the, the dice you need. But so thank you so much to Paper Games <laughs> uh, up in Bartlesville. If you're up in the northeast Oklahoma area, go over to Paper Games uh, out in Bartlesville. They're right on the highway. They're in a section of the highway between 60 and I believe it's 99. So you, you really can't miss it. And uh, they, they're really great. And the guy there said he listens to Red Dirt D&D. Nice. Oh, wow. yeah. 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 Tell him the Red Dirt D&D sent you. You won't get a discount, but you can bond. <laughs> <laughs> if they get in touch with us, we might do something special. That's, that's, that's going to hey, happen. Hey, uh, hit us up. <laughs> Definitely go talk. Up, he, but he was, he was singing our praises that uh, about Red Dirt D&D. So, that's so nice. awesome. Uh, Thank you, guys. I'm excited to have listeners. I've been spreading the word out to people and letting them know about Red Dirt D&D and... Uh, we're growing. It's, it's amazing. Speaking of, more another little milestone. More than 70,000 downloads. Way to go, Red. We're closing Woo. in on 75,000. That's when that's going to be our big. That's, that's our big announcement. Yeah. That's, yeah. Our next, so. yeah. that's going to be our next big announcement. And then after that, it's going to be our first. Hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. Yep, and yep, yep. We should Woo. do something special for that. Like, I not know, just, not just a graphic, but we'll <laughs> yeah. figure it out. Maybe well, yeah. a stream or something. I don't Woo. know. Like a so live party. I like. Could it. finally be our trivial pursuit night. <gasps> that would be great. Oh. That would be great. We should do that. Like a do an online yeah. huge trivial pursuit. Yeah. yeah. I uh, thought you were going to talk about so that, that <laughs> Christmas gift <laughs> instead of the one for your that wife. That was because an amazing. Because speaking of, of dice, it was so funny because my mom asked what Aiden would want for Christmas, and I said, "Well, you could get him some dice," and she said, "Well." Doesn't he have enough dice? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can never have enough dice. It, it froze me up because I was like, uh, what? Grandma. How do you explain this to somebody? Yes, he has enough dice to play the game. But you, yes, you but never no. have enough yep. dice. Michael, it's a collector's I have found, item. Yeah. We're always collecting collector's <laughs> yeah. items. And I have found that for some people, sh shoes is a great analogy. Yeah. You know, like you don't need... Under you don't need right. more than like one pair of shoes, maybe two. Two if you for dress have, up. Yeah, and one exactly. For, yeah. Right. One for church and one for you know. Around. But then you need one for this character, and you need dice for this character. Yes. And you need <laughs> the dice that are good, and the dice that are comfy, and the dice that are just flashy and make nice little wonderful sounds. You know, from different uh, folks, yeah. <laughs> just like shoes. Exactly. Exactly. So uh, that was great. Everyone else's Christmas good. Yeah. We got recording this in fun. January, so it was, it was our first time after Christmas. Yeah, yeah. it was great. It was good stuff. <laughs> it was fun. It was fun. It was fun. So, good stuff. All right. I have had so, people in my life before who have said, yeah, I, I didn't know what to get you for Christmas. And I'm like, I, I game. Yeah. So you could have got <laughs> dice. Oh, I thought about that, but then I remembered I saw that you had dice one time. Or something like, I got you this this thing. And it's, it, it's, I know it's not a great gift, but I had absolutely no idea what to get you. <coughs> you know that I'm a gamer. Yeah. Does the that help is, narrow I, it down? And I see all these websites saying, what to get for your gamer off. for someone who plays yes. D&D. But I'm like, most of the things that are on the list are things you've got to know whether or not they have it all. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's like certain, like Horde, uh, Horde of the Dragon Queen. Well, it'd be a nice gift to give some a yeah. DM, but you don't know if they've already got it. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. But dice, 
every time. Every time. You yeah. can always just go get or some a dice. gift card to the game. Store. A gift card yes. to the game store. Yes. You See, that's bet. where I'm at because I'm very particular about my dice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it has gotten to the point where I have point blank told people for Christmas, please do not get me any more right. dice. Uh-huh. Or a gift card to Hero Forge. Yeah. Or a gift yeah. card to yeah. Yeah. Uh, all a gift card to SDA Gaming SDA. <laughs> so they can pick their own premium dice. That's <laughs> not wrong. <laughs> 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 a gift card to Pro Laser Cuts. Yep, that's <laughs> Laser and Cuts with a Z. Pro Laser Cuts. Uh, let's talk about episodes nine. <laughs> <laughs> enough, enough shilling. Enough selling out. Before, oh no, I'm waiting for my moment to sell out. <laughs> I'm not selling out. So great. I'm buying it. The, <laughs> I can sell out. I'm thrilled. I will, I've said that since the '80s when everyone said, "Oh, that band just sold out." Like me. That's the ju- that's what I <laughs> want to do. That's the dream, <laughs> fool. Make millions of dollars. Listen, the day I told my partner is like the day that I'm making more money. Than uh, with Red Dirt D and D than my teacher salary, then I'll quit teaching. Yeah. And let me tell you, right now in Oklahoma, it's not hard to do. No. So <laughs> it's a we low do bar. Not far to go. Exactly. <laughs> uh, episode. So we ended up with Connor. Connor, yes. how'd you feel about ending out your campaign? Um, I could have done a little bit more. I could have made it a whole episode, but it was like, eh, whatever. It was fun. Uh, <laughs> it was fun. It was yeah. split in the middle of the episode. Which yeah. It was really cool. Yeah. Like, yeah. And yeah. then uh, it just kind of wrapped up into like a nice little ending of what I had. And so I was like, okay. I did forget to give you all stuff from Pasta. Uh, Crooked Fang. I, I bet it's, I bet it's there in a nice fang. little package when we when we go. Whoa, whoa, yeah, you'll whoa, get whoa, a gift size. <laughs> <That's laughs> in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> no, pumpkin can bring it. Can't yeah, bring yeah. Pumpkin. Pumpkin takes well, pumpkin. you guys had originally camped out uh, like outside of there. Yes. Thing mm-hmm. when you everything happened. First got then things shrunk. happened and you shrunk. And how are uh, they going to find you now? So honestly, you guys have probably moved about five inches. I know. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't even gone to the next tree. We've gone line. so far. We're not even near the next tree yet. We've gone so far. I think that should happen. That should happen. No. There we go. Oh, we've traveled so far. We, oh, and we no, turned it's around. It was two steps. I've got to figure out where we are. <laughs> well, we, we're over there. Just yeah. Just <laughs> and so, hey, look, there's our camp. If and when we get big again, like, someone will, like, uh, I'm forgetting all the names of the goblins that I made. Uh, like Max will come up with a gift basket for stuff. Well, and Pumpkin took the Crooked Fang group yeah. out and was supposedly going to bring them back. Uh-huh. So yeah. maybe they were like, hey, these guys left. We couldn't find them the next morning. Can you take this yeah. gift basket? Yeah. There you go. So there might be some more. Some more we have our I just last, imagine. Last bit of curious. Thing. Pumpkin, like. <laughs> Getting to the goblin establishment, hearing that they couldn't find him, and him just like doing the, the long lonely meow of <laughs> a cat that can't find his people. Go ahead, Aiden. At some Go point ahead, during the session, like you guys just see a giant cat. No, <laughs> 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 I've seen that Star Trek episode. It's kind of scary. <laughs> uh, so we did end it. I really had a great time. We finally take this long rest, and then yes. we wake up, and wow, uh, Carrie. Talk to us about the second half of episode nine. <laughs> nine. Let me tell you, uh, this wasn't my my first idea for what I wanted to do, but once I got this idea, I really dug my teeth in. Um, and so I came to Aiden pretty early on, and I was like, this is what I want to do. Are you going to hate me? And it was like, <laughs> no, that sounds hilarious. Yeah. It's going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> and we're already seeing flavor, right, of, of DMs, which is just so much fun. Mm-hmm. It's just so much fun. Um, I'm very silly, and I love a good theme. Your girl loves a theme. Uh, <laughs> so if I could get something that's going to give me specific themes, like frogs and bugs, then I can theme things. Yes. <laughs> Was there a particular inspiration moment, like... Obviously, it's got it's got just a. I mean, a I don't touch know of... if we want to okay. say it, but <laughs> if you haven't caught on yet, there's a little film that came out in the nineties. A little <laughs> film featuring <laughs> Jody Benson. One hundred percent. And everyone's favorite. Charo. <laughs> um, called Thumbelina. Uh, 100%. And Thumbelina, and she gets kidnapped by frogs, and then she gets kidnapped by a beetle, and uh, Prince Cornelius um, has to find her before the frost comes. Sound familiar? It yeah. should! <laughs> I was say, I, I expect to be hearing from, um, well, 
<laughs> yes, I was, say, this, I was about to say, you know, the, the estate of Don them. Bluth. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, now technically the mouse does own. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now you can the say. Inspired uh, by, <laughs> let me say, yes. inspired by. That was by, the phrase I said. Notice it is Prince Layton. There's, there's also. Uh, Ophelia. There's, there's also it does feelings also. Of Bugs Life in yeah, it. Yeah, Bugs yes. Life. Uh, there's there's also feelings of Fern Gully. Fern yeah. Gully was actually what I thought. Well, of. so that was where Fern Gully was where we got the the shrinking right because mm-hmm. she shrinks Zach yes. um, in that film and so that that got me there and he also shrink like she shrinks him because she's accidentally she's trying to get him to understand her yeah, but she's very sight and she says yeah. fairy size instead of right fairy and so that that was a good I was like that'll be a good reason to shrink them is that they can't understand exactly what he's saying and then as I was writing this I remembered Michael. <laughs> oh, his character came his from characters. the freaking Feywild. I bet he speaks. I bet he speaks freaking Sylvan. Of course, he speaks Sylvan. So yeah. let's text Aiden. I was like, Aiden, here's what I want to do. I feel like your dad has some bull malarkey that he's gonna say. It's called <laughs> mechanics. And Aiden, Aiden was like, Yes, yes, he does. And I was like, Okay, here's how I'm gonna write it in the thing. And if Michael tries to screw this up, I'm gonna give him a death look, and he'll know that I need it for the plot. <laughs> Usually I was like, oh, okay, I understand that. But I did love the sound that I got to kind of create the oh, sound. Because yeah. you describe the sound of leaves and uh, and rippling brooks. So I had to mix in a whole bunch of different sounds to kind of <laughs> I really this. liked the idea of fairy language not being a li- like uh, sounds that we would expect to come out of a mouth, if yeah, that makes sense. Sounds. Right? They're, and so he's a fall fairy, so he has fall sounds yeah. um, for his little fall dialect. Yeah. And not being able to uh, understand because he's so small yeah. does remind you of the Star Trek episode where people are traveling so fast. Yes. You just hear the buzzing yes. of, of, you know, they're still talking, but it's so fast you can't understand them. And right. That's, I love that little mechanic. You can't understand it because it's just too small. And you, but it was enough for you to like, I was like, I need to give them something. They can't, they need, they speak Sylvan. You got to give them some, a breadcrumb something. And so that's, you got the idea that he's mad. Yeah. <laughs> he's saying <laughs> words that are not appropriate for this podcast. <laughs> and then we finally, you get shrunk down. So tiny. Yeah. So tiny. So tiny. And, and we get to talk to. Sintra, everyone small. <laughs> And Don't my, my remind like the size me. Of a little drop <laughs> Just a little droplet. I say this often, but I really, really mean this. You, Michael Cross, are a demigod yeah. of Foley. I think yeah. at this point he just needs to graduate to a god. I know. <laughs> like, this this <laughs> set of episodes is is incredible. Just like kind of the the cricket chirpy nature background and then the banjo music that we hear in the distance <laughs> and it just and the, the when we fall How in the faster. water you know just it just goes on and on mm-hmm. and on I've and on i've had so much fun with i've had a lot of fun with Kiri's uh for that that cuz there's all these new sounds that you're coming up with that i'm like i don't have a sound for that well i got to make up one <laughs> I'm here to stretch your muscles. That's work. It works. It works. And I, it was one of the things that I do love about the, 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 and I said that I think on the last round table, but it, even more so in this one, the fact that we've gone from Aiden to Connor to Kiri, it reminds me of when I read comic books and a new artist or writer comes 100%. in. You can tell the difference. There's a different feel to it. And that's what I love. It, it's, this is an ongoing storyline, but you can feel that someone new has taken over uh, of course, we've got Aiden show running the whole thing, so there's this constant arc. But it really feels every everything is so different, and it's and you can really feel it in, the, in these episodes. Like yeah, um, really nice. I will say we <laughs> so well, we get to the frogs, and you guys absolutely decimate my frogs. Three <laughs> nat twenties in a row. Oh, that was so <laughs> crazy. These bullywugs only have eleven hit points, <laughs> and you guys are doing like fifteen points of damage on this on these crits, and. Um, I had left Fad out of the original combat because I was like, this way it gives him a chance to kill a few of the Bullywugs before Fad shows up. I don't want it to get too right. unbalanced. <laughs> but then you, um, me, I was like, he's got to come in faster. I, I need him. I need backup here. And again, we see more of your humor because we've got all the crazy, all the crazy frog names and Kevin. And Kevin. And Kevin. Um, 
And that was the other thing. You guys were killing my frogs before I could introduce you to their super great frog names. Listen, so I'm a super. We go. didn't want to wait seven to ten business. <laughs> 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 as, I, as I called it in episode ten, frog aside. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, we are coming to the end here. It's been what? 15 minutes. So fast. And so that's the end of the short version. If you want to hear this entire version, we still got to talk about episodes 10, episodes 11, episodes 12. We got a lot to talk about. We would love to have you listen to the rest of this round you table. Bet. It goes on for a full hour. You can hear that if you become a Patreon member right now. You also get access to our Discord server. You get our episodes four days early. So, and bonus content that we're putting out. Ash is putting out some DM, DM stuff out there. So, do become a Patreon member right now at patreon.com slash and you can hear the full version of this roundtable. We're going to the full version of the roundtable right now. <laughs>